Good morning. Welcome back to day 11, Cap 2. Uh, Cap 2 webinar series uh, streaming on YouTube and this Facebook of the SCRT official live channels. Mari, he spoken English series to Kotta topic to me Mundu Pachesanu. Nyantaki Sartan intelligence to Mari Eroju anti topic. A topic. Oh, I'm asking a question. Any topic? Oh, that is the topic. Questioning skill. So, my questioning skill and any topic we want to share, share and to resource this topic. Uh, we have uh, Munchita, Dr. Munchita Hazare Pandey, madam. Welcome you. Good morning, ma'am. And yeah, along with uh, madam, uh, Dr. Hemalata Garu is also with us. Good morning, madam, and welcome to. Good the morning, session. sir. Good morning, uh, sir. Good morning, sir. Before going to uh, the topic, uh, let me introduce uh, uh, resource person, Dr. Munshita Hazare Pandey. She is a faculty member in Center for English Language Education of Ambedkar University, Delhi. And she is known for her uh, excellent uh, training. We all know, every, everybody we know that very well. Uh, and also she, uh, she teaches uh, Courses in English proficiency, academic writing, and language teaching also. Along with that, her research area is classroom interaction, classroom discourse, discourse, multilingual teaching, and learners' autonomy. These are the area of her research uh, as well as her PhD area also. So excellent. Uh, Dr. Hemala Kargaru, she is from. Uh, uh, JPHS Girls High School, Narayana uh, from Chitur District. So, let us start. Let me start, ma'am. Questioning, no? Yes, sir. Thank yeah. you very much. Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> Thank you I very request, much. I request you to start your today's session. Thank you so much, sir, for that very kind introduction. I will now screen share. Right. So, Andariki Namaskaram. I'm very happy to be back today again with a very exciting and a new topic. So welcome to day nine of our Spoken English series. And uh, today's topic is questioning skills. As you know, I'm Monishita, and uh, I'm going to be with you for the next one hour along with uh, Dr. Hemlata Garu. We both are going to share this webinar and we hope that you uh, learn something meaningful from this webinar. So these are the three objectives of today's webinar. After attending today's webinar, we um, hope that you are going to understand the importance of asking effective questions. You, you will also learn what are the different kinds of questions that we as teachers can use. And finally, what are the language structures that are, uh, that's available to us to form effective questions. Now, before I start saying anything, I thought I will begin with this little quote. Thinking is not driven by answers. Remember, thinking is driven by questions. So the very basis of thought is questioning. If we do not uh, ask appropriate questions to our students, and if our students don't ask appropriate questions to us, then to us, then there is no thinking, real thinking, a critical thinking that can happen. Uh, did you know that two third of the talk that happens in the classroom is teacher talk? So if it's a one hour class, then 75% of the time the teachers talk in the classroom. Teachers ability to ask questions has a direct impact on learner participation. So the kind of questions we pose that is going to actually define how much our learners will speak and what they will speak. 60% of the questions that we ask in class are considered to be low cognitive questions. Low cognitive means questions that do not require much thinking. Research has shown that students or small children whose parents ask them good questions they have high iq level and they are more intelligent and the last interesting point is that 
our ability to ask questions is going to affect our students ability to express their thoughts and ideas so the teacher and the learner they are uh, kind of uh, you know they are, they are together in this journey of thinking and questioning therefore it becomes very important for us to understand why we need to ask effective questions first point is that it increases classroom interaction again a lot of studies has shown over the years that students learn in interaction and through interaction depending on the quality of interaction that happens in the class learning happens also effective questions will allow us to develop 21st century skills in our learners that is critical thinking now in this age of technology where all information is available on the internet we are no longer required to focus on information information is there everywhere every student has ac uh, 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 can access some sort of technology some smartphone they can get some information but as teachers what are we doing in the class we are trying to teach them critical thinking only thought that is useful in today's uh, context which will make them problem solvers which will make them critical thinkers which will make them social change makers samajik marku they can take part in that so this has become the core values of 21st century skills and that's related to questioning another important aspect of effective questioning is to review learning how will we understand if our students have understood a lesson through questions uh, another important thing is learner autonomy if we ask good questions in the class then our students will also learn how to ask important questions to themselves this is going to encourage self learning the questions they ask they will try to find answers to them independently independent of the teacher therefore questioning also has an impact on learner autonomy moving on to the next slide let us see what are the different types of questions so we are going to first distinguish between display questions and referential questions let's understand these terms display questions display questions are those questions for which the teacher already knows the answers so in class when we are teaching something we know the answer we only ask so that we can check comprehension we can check whether our students know it or not so they are factual questions they are based on knowledge and they help us to check the content of the learning that has happened for example uh when do we celebrate independence day this is a display question i already know the answer it's august but i'm trying to understand if my class one learners or two learners they know the independence day date what are even numbers again i as a teacher i already know the answer but i am only checking my students understanding of odd and even numbers when was this poem written what is photosynthesis so these kind of knowledge based fact fact based content based questions to which teachers already know the answers they only use it to check learning check comprehension check content are called display questions let's look at the next type of questions it's called referential questions referential questions are genuine questions genuine means the teacher does not know the answer to these questions referential questions they promote thinking and meaning making for example if i ask my students what are your plans for independence day i am going to get multiple answers there is no single answer so display question has generally one or two answers right wrong answers but referential questions they have multiple answers because they try to connect students experiences to learning so if i ask when is independence day that is display question but when i ask what are your plans for independence day what do you want to do on independence day that becomes a referential question but every student will have a different answer for it their own answer which is your favorite even number 
if i ask what is your favorite even number then also i can check whether they understand what is even odd but it's a personalized question every student can have a different even number for example my favorite even number is 6 then i can ask why is it 6 then i will say it is my birth date 6 why do you like this poem so if i ask when was the poem written that is factual based date 1974 or 1985 but if i ask why do you like the poem then it becomes a referential question it becomes experiential question every student will give a different reason why they like a poem last example of referential question is what aspect of photosynthesis puzzles you the most the first question which we discussed in last slide was display what is photosynthesis it's a definition question we are checking concept through definition but here we are checking concept through uh, analysis we are asking what aspect of photosynthesis puzzles you so the whole process of photosynthesis is known to the student we know that we have taught it to them now we will ask them which part you find surprising is it the chlorophyll that surprises you is it the role of sunlight that surprises you it is is it the conversion of gases that surprises you or is it the storing of uh, uh, food produced by plants in the cells that surprises you so which aspect of the process puzzles you so i hope uh, you have been able to see the two difference between display questions fact based teacher knows the answers referential question which is uh, uh, based on experiences concept uh, uh, building it is based on personalized learning helps in assimilation of learning with our own understanding of the so these are the two kinds of questions which we can use in the class and we will show you how to do it with a model lesson at the end of the webinar now uh, different people have defined questions differently so one type one way of defining is display versus referential another term that we use for different type questions is called low cognitive question versus higher co cognitive question lcq and hcq now lower cognitive questions are uh, similar to display questions order convergent closed questions they are again based on facts and knowledge these are just another term to display question lower cognitive questions cognitive means thinking these questions require less thinking on the part of the learner so another example of display or a lcq lower cognitive question is when was mahatma gandhi born again it's a closed question remember display questions or lcq are closed questions the uh, closed means there aren't too many options to the responder there is one correct answer 2nd october 1869 where was mahatma gandhi born porbandar again you cannot have multiple answers right these are fact based uh, on the part of the responder this uh, the person has to depend on memory so uh, information that we learn which we memorize which is there in our memory that is related to low cognitive questions high cognitive cognitive questions are like referential questions which we just discussed in higher cognitive questions the learners have to think critically they have to bring their experiences their own learning their own surroundings they have to bring it and then answer these are open ended questions right why questions how questions uh, analytical questions these are all high uh, cognitive questions or referential questions open ended multiple answers can come for example if i ask when was battle of palasi when did battle of palasi happen if i say when it happened it is a low cognitive question because students have to recall from their memory it is fact based but if i say what were the consequences of the battle of palasi when i am asking them to analyze the consequence that as a result of the war what happened what was the future of india how did the political situation change what was the role of british right 
So consequences, what were the results of the battle? This very cognitive question that the student has to bring understanding of multiple things and then think of an answer. Moving on to the next slide. Then are we trying to say that display questions are bad, referential questions are good, lower cognitive question is bad, a high cognitive question is good. Are we trying to say that there are good and bad questions? Not at all. We are not saying that there are good or bad questions. Right. So we were uh, discussing that uh, display questions and which are fact based. Teachers know the answer. It is low cognitive in nature because the students don't have to use much of their brain. They just recall from memory. And uh, referential question, on the other hand, requires critical thinking. Right. Now, are we trying to say that display question is bad and referential question is good? No, not at all. We are simply saying that your questioning skills should be such that you can match what you want uh, to teach. Based on that, you should ask questions. Your questioning strategy has to match your pedagogic goal. Pedagogic means your learning goal, uh, your teaching goal. You know, what do you want your learners to learn from that particular question? So if you want to check whether they have understood the story of, or they have understood the mathematical problem, right? If you're checking comprehension related to the text that they're reading or what they're listening, then it will be display kind of questions. But if you want them to give their opinions, their, uh, their ideas, their experiences, if you want them to critically think, then you need referential questions. So we need to strike a balance. As teachers, we need to be very conscious why we are asking what question we are asking in our lesson plan we cannot say that students will think critically and then ask only display questions then it will not match our teaching goal so strike a balance between low cognitive and high cognitive question use them uh, strategically effectively to match your outcome what you want from the uh, lesson now this is a very interesting concept Research has shown that the kind of questions teachers ask that leads to a pattern. All over the world, this pattern has been seen in teachers' speech. This is called the IRF pattern. What is I? I is initiation. The teacher initiates a question or something. R is learner's response. And F is feedback. Again, the teacher's feedback. Let's look at this conversation to understand IRF. Teacher says... Who is the writer of this story, Kabuliwala? This is initiation. She's starting the conversation. The students say, Rabindranath Tagore. This is response. The teacher gives feedback. Very good. So very good is again teacher's turn. Then the teacher again initiates a question. Which year was it written? Then student again responds, 1892. Then teacher again gives feedback. Correct. Then the teacher again asks a question, have you read the whole story, etc., etc. If you look at this conversation, you will understand that all mostly our classes, they work initiation from teacher, response from student, again feedback from teacher, then again teacher initiation. Right. So I'm, I'm sorry about the uh, continuous interruption. So going back to what we were discussing, if you look at this typical uh, question, 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 answer that happens in classes all over the world. The teacher enjoys the maximum part of the class time asking display questions to which the teacher knows the answers and the students give only restricted response. They do not have much choice to give multiple answers. They do not control the conversation. It's the teacher, which uh, the teacher as, uh, as teachers, we control the classroom discourse, the classroom talk. And therefore, we end up speaking most of the time now this is counterproductive this is not going to help our students learn better we have to see how we can break this irf pattern this typical way where the where we ask a question we know the answer the student gives we give feedback and we again pose a question which again has limited answers so how will we break this irf pattern by uh, by creating questions which will cause negotiation of meaning okay Negotiation of meaning means when the learner gives a response, then the teacher can ask a question that will allow the learner to give more response. Okay, the conversation should not end. For example, here, who is the writer? Rabindranath Tagore. 
conversation ends there it cannot go further right the learner cannot contribute more but if i ask uh, 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 what is uh, uh, what makes rabindranath tagore a celebrated poet what makes him a famous personality what has he done in his life that we remember him even today if we ask these kind of questions then we will get multiple answers and we will be able to break the irf pattern learners will be able to speak more they will be able to think critically you can pose more why questions and how questions instead of who questions and where questions or when questions right the second thing is ask more referential questions ask more questions which will allow them to think critically uh check if you are only asking routine or ritualistic questions so most of the part of the class we are wasting asking questions which will not really make our students think okay so we need to strike a balance we need to focus on the meaning what our students are telling us about their lives their experiences their understanding if we focus on the meaning then we will be able to see that we are actually breaking the irf pattern not focusing on fact based learning information learning but focus on meaning or experience learning now uh, another very interesting thing that we see in most classrooms is that when teachers ask questions they don't get response this is a common complaint that comes from teachers they say that i ask questions my students don't answer they are silent they don't participate they keep quiet they don't read and come they are not thinking they just don't want to answer my questions uh, i ask my questions i answer my questions there are very few people maybe some 2 3 5 people who are the top uh, scorers of the class first girl second boy those people are only answering everybody is not participating this is a very common problem that comes to us as teacher trainers so another research finding is very interesting we have seen that when as teachers we ask a question the average wait time for answer is 2 seconds so after i pose a question as a teacher i wait only for one or two seconds and i again move to the next question or i immediately ask one student to give me the answer so as teachers we don't have patience we are uncomfortable with silence in the class if we ask a question and nobody answers we think oh god my students don't know the answer they have not read it they are not thinking they are not with me what will happen what will happen we are always getting nervous if we are not getting answer immediately so we are being told again and again that try to lengthen your wait time if you are waiting for one or two seconds try to wait for 10 seconds ask a question which will allow them to think give them time to think then you ask them to answer we will find more people will give you answers so lengthening wait, wait time this is again a strategy in questioning skills in class that is going to have an impact on the response of the learner a second point is improve your questioning strategies by striking a balance between display and referential question be very conscious as teacher what questions am i asking is it only fact based or is it knowledge based is it concept based is it learning uh, and experience based is it, is it analysis do they have to analyze and give the answer be conscious ask open ended questions with multiple answers the more and more questions we ask which has multiple answers possible uh, then uh, uh, students will also give more answers if there is only one right answer then students are always scared oh i don't know the answer what what if that so this right wrong business that is there it is very problematic we have to think of questions which are open ended where everybody's answer can be a uh, valid it it doesn't have to be right or wrong all the time okay then encourage pair work and group work if you have given them some questions about a topic about something that they have read then ask them to discuss it in pairs ask them to sit in a group and discuss then you will find that more and more learners are expressing themselves rather than always whole class questioning and the last point is focus on meaning than form when your student is trying to answer something don't stop the person from speaking even if they are making little mistakes here and there you allow them to speak you can discuss the errors and you can discuss the mistakes after the activity is over you can note down what kind of language errors are happening and then you can 
take it up as a whole class discussion but during the activity during the discussion if you keep stopping people then they will stop keep uh, talking in the class they will shut their mouth and they will be like whenever i open my mouth i make some mistake it's better i keep shut don't want that let us try and see what the uh, student is trying to say rather than how he is trying to say we can discuss the how after the activity is over and give them some special practice with language now we come to the second half of the seminar which is the language of questioning so so far we have discussed why we need to focus on our questioning skills uh, it is the primary responsibility of the teacher to improve her questioning skills to improve learning in the classroom now we are going to discuss the language of questioning at this point of time i invite dr hemlata garu to kindly take over thank you thank you ma'am language of questioning how to make questions in english this we are going to discuss about this there are broadly two ways we can form questions in english language as already ma'am said one is wh question we can say these are the informative questions also and the second one is the sr no question sr no questions are uh, close ended questions whereas wh questions are open ended questions then let us discuss first about sr no question when we ask yes or no questions to get any confirmation or any clarification we can ask yes or no questions for instance if we ask what is your favorite ice cream our children may say uh, one child may say uh, i my favorite ice cream is butterscotch and another may say it is vanilla and another pizza another chocolate like the number of uh, different uh, choices will come out then if we ask do you like butterscotch ice cream then the answer will be yes whether he likes it yes or uh, no only either yes or no but that is the difference between wh questions and sr no questions so this sr no questions start with auxiliary verbs we can start with this as uh, is are am do does did like auxiliary verbs we will start yes or no response can be either yes or no as these are uh, closed questions there is no um, uh, no scope to give any more answers only some specific answer only for confirmation yes either yes or no no broadening it is very specific answer. so these yes or no questions exist in all the 12 tenses as like simple present tense simple past tense present continuous tense past continuous tense like this so here we have one table that is how to make yes or no questions so as i already i said yes or no question starts with the auxiliary verb so do you teach english auxiliary verb subject main verb do we teach english do they teach english if i teach english i can say yes if i don't i can say no does he teaching physics does she teach physics did you do the homework did he do the homework did she do the homework did they do the homework so here only we can expect yes or no question there is no broadening of the answer so the, that is for the do form and here we use does for he she it and both do and does the past tense is did only both first person the second person we use here do and the third person we use here does for both do does we use did and uh, other auxiliary verbs if we take is he doing math is she doing math do you observe these are present continuous tense 
are they playing cricket have you done your work have they worked they, have you they done their work have you we done our work see here this is present perfect tense we use here main verb in v3 past part has he left the school has she left the school here also left is in v3 this is present perfect so in all tenses we can make yes or no question now i would like to invite dr monsh sama to deal with activities to teach yes or no question thank you hemlata ma'am for that uh, explanation of grammar rule how to form yes or no question now having said that how will we develop yes or no questions in our students we can do it through activities we don't have to teach uh, it only through chalk and board method we can do it through activities here are some ideas around how to teach yes or no questions to your students for very small learners like 5 6 year old especially your class 1 2 students you can use visual cards right so these are flash cards for example you can make flash cards of different vegetables fruits color terms uh, fam family terms kinship terms you can make like that uh, uh, visual cards you can draw you can show it to the children and you can ask yes or no question do you like apples do you like cabbage do you like potato so they will give yes no answers so this can be for small learners another uh, way to practice yes no question in classes ask 20 questions this is a very interesting game maybe some of you already do it in class in ask 20 questions what happens is one person in the class will think of a famous personality uh, and the rest of the class has to ask yes no questions to get some uh, clue to uh, to guess the uh, uh, the name of the personality for example if i have uh, the name uh, amitabh bachchan in my head you don't know now you have to ask me 20 questions yes no questions i will say only yes or no and you have to guess who i am thinking about so for example questions like this uh, is he or she dead i will say no because amitabh bachchan is alive then uh, is he or she a film star yes then the students will know okay it's a film star uh, is he or she a bollywood uh, a star yes so like that students will ask yes no questions and they will get some ideas and then they will uh, try to guess the name of the personality so this is called ask 20 questions then the third game that is very very uh, uh, effective in club you ever have you ever is like a truth dare game if you know this truth and dare truth and dare means uh, you have to ask embarrassing questions to people about their secret hidden secrets and uh, they have to be uh, truthful they have to honestly answer in yes or no so for example students can sit in groups and they can ask these this kind of question have you ever lied to your parents have you ever uh, stolen uh, 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 sweets without telling your mother have you ever uh, 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 have you ever cheated in an exam uh, have you ever slapped somebody or uh, have you ever uh, you know some naughty things basically you can ask and people will have to say yes no so that leads to a lot of fun and it also leads to a lot of collaborative work in the class they know more about each other there is a safe space that gets created in the classroom uh, and uh, it's all done in a very non activity mode uh, the next uh, uh, type of activity we can try is Uh, know more about your classmates so here again uh, students can frame interesting questions about each other and they can ask yes no questions to know more about each other for example uh, do you like pani puris uh, do you like golgappas do you like uh, chocolates uh, do you like uh, chiranjeevi uh, okay uh, do you like uh, uh, bahubali uh, etc so like that they can form questions once they get answers they will know more about the classmates so uh, uh, this is uh, how uh, you can teach yes no questions in the class and you can also ask them in class to clarify and confirm meaning
Now we move on to WH questions, and I request him, Lata Garu, to again take over. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So as uh, we already discussed, WH questions are informative questions. These are we can get multiple answers from our students. We can ask with what, where, why, when, which, how, like that. We ask why, why it happens, where it happens. Like this, we can get so many different answers from our children. If we ask why or how persons can invite opinions or experiences, why do you late today? If you ask our students, you may say, Ma'am, I have to finish all my household course and then I have to come, ma'am. So we come across the experience of our child. Such type of questions will invite opinions and experiences. And these informative questions or WH questions may promote critical thinking in our children. Say, for example, do you like this poem? Yes, ma'am. Okay, this is a sign of Why do you... Then the child says why he likes or why he dislikes. They involve some critical thinking. So such type of questions are referential questions also. For referential questions, teacher may not know the answer. This depends on the opinions of our children or our uh, children's creativity, their critical thinking. So referential questions ignite critical thinking in our students. So we have to use this WH questions to ignite critical thinking in our children. So how to form WH questions? Following are the situations where WH questions are necessary. To know something, we ask question with a word, what? What is your mom doing? What do you think about this picture? What do you think about this picture? So to know something, we can use what? To know the mood, manner, or the process, we use how. How did you know him? How is your new house? How do you feel now? Such type of questions to know the mood, manner, or process. If we want to know the reason, purpose, or cause, we use why. Why didn't you come yesterday? Why are you so late today? We want reason or the cause. If we want to know the subject, we ask with who. Who is your class teacher? Who is your favorite actress? Who is your best friend? Like this. To know the place of happening, we ask with where. Where do you live? Where is my bag? Where is your book? Like, to know the time of the action, we begin with when. When will the train arrive? When does she get up? Time of action. In case of choice in selection, we begin with which. Which dress do you like? Which book is yours? Choice of selection. To know the number of times, we use how many. How many times did you watch Bahubali? How many times do you have to ring the bell? Like this. To know the distance, we use how far. How far is your school from your house? How far are you right now? To know the distance. To know the duration, we use how long. How long does COVID-19 last? How long does it take to reach ATM? To know the quantity, we use how much. How much sugar did you add in tea? How much? How much food does it eat? To know person in object we use. 
Whom did you meet yesterday? Whom do we have to consult now? To know the person in our place. To know the position, we use who. Whose book is this? Whose bag is this? Whose pencil is on the floor? To know the position, we know we have to use whose. So here, I will tell uh, Telugu meaning. What? Yemi. How? Yella. Why? Yenduku. Who? Yavaru. Where? Ekada. When? Yepudu. Which? Yedi. How many? Yenni. How far? Yenta duram. How long? Yenta sep. Yenta kalam also. So. How much? Yenta. Whom? Yavarini. Whose? Yavarini. If we use uh, such type of words, we can frame good question. So, for the formation of WH question, we have a simple formula here that is quasa. Quasa means Q U is question word which we discussed all just now. A is auxiliary verb, the rest is subject, and M is main verb. If we remember this quasam, we can frame good question. Say, for example, where do you work? What does Ravi think about this house? How do you like this book? How many pens does Leela have? See here, uh, previously in SR no questions, we start from auxiliary verb. Now we add WH word before auxiliary verb. That is the difference. That's the only difference here for informative questions and for uh, yes or no. So, where do you work? Use does for third person. What does Ravi think about this house? How do you like this book? How many pens does Leela have? So, here we prepare for simple present tense and simple past tense this quasam formula and for remaining you can watch here we there is a youtube link is there you can watch for it and you can frame for all the remaining tenses so for do does the past tense is did in, in simple past tense, we use how did they learn English so far? When did you go home? What did the teacher think about your homework? Where did you buy this shirt? If we observe here, all did is there. For they, you, he, for third person also. So for do does, the past tense is did only. So before they we add the only WH question, the WH word, so it will become the WH question. That is the only difference. Generally, we make some uh, common mistakes. Say, did is the past word. So, did is the past tense marker. Once if we use did, and again, we can't use P2 form in main verb, that is in past tense. We shouldn't use V2. Uh, if we use did, the main verb should be in present tense only. How did they learn English so fast? That is correct one. How did they learn English so fast is wrong. And also, when did went home is wrong. When did you go home is correct. Do you observe here? Main verb should be in be one form. That is in present tense because already Residence marker, we shouldn't use main verb as a B2. It should be in present tense. No two past verbs should be there. So, this is our common mistakes B2. And also, in the case of does also, if we use does, no need to put yes after main verb. If we use does, we should put only work. We use S after work when third person. When third person comes in questioning form, we use does. So if we use does, 
no need to put again yes after main verb for example where does he work where does he works is wrong where does he works is correct one we shouldn't use again yes here because already yes is there in two form what does ravi think about this house that is wrong what does ravi think is house so uh, these are the mistakes generally we make for other tenses please watch this youtube we will leave this link in the description of the webinar here is a model lesson a small model lesson teacher teaches the recipe book to the third class students in an interactive aspect so children good morning children good morning ma'am oh very good how are you children good ma'am here we have to say some motivational aspects of the story due to lack of time we are uh, straightly go to the lesson so the teacher teaches the recipe book my dear friends our raju fell ill he is on bed and is not able to cook for the big party i want to help raju who will come with me what is the name of the hotel owner raju excellent let's continue and see what happens next see the party is coming the party is coming i am big enough to prepare the food for the party see here the mixer is coming may i join you i can grind things that you need for cooking in minute see the knife is coming i can slice and dice the vegetables who can grind things the mixer very good excellent and who can explain me what does slice and dice mean ma'am may i yes ali please go ahead uh, ma'am slice and dice means cutting something into small pieces perfect ali now let's see how they cook hey see the stove is coming hello can i help you oh the stove did help can anyone tell me why is stove important ma'am can i answer yes neha uh, ma'am because we cannot cook uh, without fire and stove is source of fire isn't it ma'am absolutely very good neha you can't cook dishes without fire will you all remember that yes ma'am come on friends let's begin cooking and that's how this book cooked everything that was needed for the bulk order that raju wanted to deliver student uh, what is ma'am what is uh, bulk order ma'am good question ratan does anyone know what a bulk order is mm. very well a bulk order is a big order that includes a lot of items that are generally served at a party oh like uh, starters rice soup dessert ice cream yummy yummy right ma'am yes 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 gopi you are right so here if you observe teacher asks some display question which are related to the text to check her children's comprehension like what is the name of the hotel owner who can grind things why is how very important like this the teacher display questions related to the text now i think you can discriminate this display questions and referential questions now with this i have concluded over to 
response tha ma'am thank you ma'am thank you thank you imlata garu yeah so through that little uh, model lesson we saw that the teacher is right now working on the text very closely she is teaching the text and therefore display questions are very important because her pedagogic goal her teaching goal is to ensure that students understand the text so you saw that there were lots of comprehension checks did you understand there were many vocabulary check what is the meaning of uh, slice and dice right so vocabulary check comprehension check confirmation checks will you remember that etc etc Uh, uh um now let us also understand that these questions were all display type of questions they were all important because of the teaching goal but we should not stop here if we end the lesson or the chapter only with display questions then we will lose the opportunity to make our students think critically many a times our lesson ends there you know we don't go beyond and push ourselves to ask referential questions now let us see what kind of referential questions we can after we have ensured that our students understand the meaning of the text we can ask these kind of questions related to the text but which will go beyond information beyond facts beyond knowledge of the text have you ever fallen ill before an important event so if the moment i ask like this have you ever fallen ill before an important event then the student will think maybe before an important exam or maybe there was a competition or or there was a party or there is a wedding in the family the child could not attend because of ill health then the child will think of that experience and the child will connect with raju the person in the story who could not cook and therefore the recipe book is doing the job so this is a referential question each learner will have a different experience whether they have ever experienced what raju has experienced the anxiety the tension that there is something important right for example uh, this webinar assumed and i was thinking whole night that my internet should be stable there should be no power cut and it happened so the anxiety you know before an important event the students will be able to bring that to the classroom and they will connect with the story also what do you want to be and why this is again a referential question which can lead to critical thinking you can use these characters in the story pot mixer knife recipe book and you can assign some human uh, traits to them for example pot is big pot is like a melting place pot uh, uh, can be related to adjectives like uh, acceptance inclusive diversity you know so uh, you can uh, say mixer mixer means a person who is a mixer is like who is very social who can make many friends knife knife is a uh, uh, we can uh, relate certain traits human character characteristic traits like uh, being very sharp very uh, uh, very frank you know whatever comes you just say to other, other people Uh, or you can even be hurtful you know you can say things in a rude manner recipe book can be a, a somebody who is knowledgeable intelligent because recipe book is a book it has lots of information so what you can do is you can take these characters and you can personify them you can add some human values and characteristics and then you can tell your students to choose which character they want to be or they relate to and why so if you ask this question what do you want to be and why then again it's a referential critical thinking because they will have to think that they are a pot and why they are a pot why are they are not a knife they can give examples from their lives some incidents where they have been a pot where they have taken people's ideas and etc how do you think they manage to finish cooking this is again a, a referential question uh, you can ask them to uh, enact it for drama and they can uh, add more uh, dialogues to it they can think of some challenges that maybe these pot mixer knife they faced uh, maybe there can be some liquid uh, that the knife cannot cut they need something else they don't have it so you can ask them what kind of challenges maybe they faced to finish cooking or you can ask students to get into groups and you can ask them to uh, continue the conversation of the story you don't have to tell the whole story you can just tell uh, half of the story and you can ask them to imagine the rest of the half 
or uh, you can say that let's think that the story has not ended what will happen further so they can come up with more dialogues and that can also lead to critical thinking so uh, uh, through this modern lesson i hope uh, both himlata ma'am and i have been able to uh, kind of demonstrate that a simple lesson can uh, become interesting it can uh, uh, invite learner participation it can the interaction in the classroom it can lead to negotiation of meaning uh, where we are challenging our learners cognitive abil ability with the help of this and approach questions both are important to ensure that our students have understood the text and they are able to connect it with their real life and learning and critical thinking so with that we come to the end of the webinar and i am extremely sorry once again for all the technical glitch that happened from my end but it was really not under my control so i hope you will understand and i hope you found this session useful thank you very much we are open for question and answer thank you for that question yeah so uh, definitely nothing should be random because uh, as a teacher when you are going to the class you have a very specific lesson objective right like this teacher when she entered the class she knew that in today's class i want my students to understand this lesson recipe book and i want them to think a little critically about the topic so when you as a teacher you go with the lesson objective then i don't think your questioning should be random because if you're only asking question for the sake of asking question then i don't think it's going to be effective so as teachers we need to uh, uh, strategize our questioning skills we need to know why we are asking the question what effect it will have have on our students so i would not recommend random questioning if you want attention of the learners there are different ways to get attention not just by uh, you know asking any random question uh, you can uh, ask the students why they are not giving attention to your class that can become the activity you know you can say that okay nobody wants to listen to me come on tell me why you don't want to listen to me <laughs> you know that can become an activity you can ask students questions to find out the problem that they are facing because i have realized one thing through my teaching that if some problem is there in my classroom then it is very important me to understand the reasons behind it many a times we just make some assumptions as teachers we don't actually probe the problem so uh, i think uh, don't ask random questions even if you're asking questions to understand why they are not listening to you that should also be very strategic you should know why you're asking it so i hope i've answered thank you very much the previous question was asked by sarmal ajay kumar regarding whether the random questioning is effective uh, or it may uh, divert the concentration of the students there the second question also he has posted what is mean by this uh, distant to our failed question distant to our failed what is meant by failed question p a i l fail Yeah, fail. Fail questions. Fail questions. Think. Uh, I think question types, ma'am. Maybe question type. Okay. Question types. I I, I not. Th I think. I I am not able to get the word. Can you type it in the chat box? Yeah. What yeah, is the I word? Fail. Fail. Question types. Yeah. Okay. Question type. Type of question type. I think. I think. Yeah, you uh, yeah. later you share with me. I will keep in the uh, description. Then, ma'am. Sure. Uh, uh, Bhaskar Bodeni, Bodeni. What are the open-ended questions? Are they useful to slow learners also? Whether they use. Uh, yeah, that's a very very good question. Yeah, uh, open-ended questions are questions which invite multiple answers. uh they are not yes no questions they are mostly wh questions uh open ended questions uh, do not have right or wrong answers they invite opinions experiences feelings uh, understanding assimilation of knowledge etc uh, uh, uh open ended questions are good for all kinds of learners uh, also especially for slow learners because slow learners uh, are under a lot of pressure in the classroom 
uh, uh, to give the right answer. They are not able to give right answers. So if you ask open-ended question, then slow learners will perform better because there is no right or wrong. So they can give whatever answer and you will be able to take their answer along with other answers. So it's a very good question, ma'am, that you have asked. Uh, that open-ended question is actually the way forward for us teachers to ensure that we take everybody along. We take everybody's voices around. Uh, learner voice is very important in our classroom. Many a times our slow learners, their voice remains silent. We don't want that. We want that to come. So therefore, open-endedness is important. Thank you, Ms. Madam. Thank you. Continuing to that, uh, Malika Tadepalli, she is uh, asking you some examples for the open-ended question. Few more. Okay. Yes. So open-ended questions would be: uh, Why do you think we need uh, stuff for cooking? Why do you think? Why questions and how questions? Or uh, how do you think Mahatma Gandhi? Uh, helped india get independence how okay or why is rabbit tagore a celebrated poet so these are not open-ended if i say why is tagore a celebrated poet then there is no one answer somebody can say that he wrote well somebody can say he was also part of the freedom movement somebody can say that he was a very multi-talented personality that's why he is still famous etc so why and how questions they are very very useful for opening up discussions in the classroom to increase the interactional space in the classroom to increase learner response and participation and to trigger critical thinking thank you very much madam uh, drita prasad b thank is you. asking that uh, uh, is questioning a, then uh, is it a effective tool to draw the attention of children Comparing with comparing with other tools, do you feel uh, this is the only or uh, effective tool? Hello. Uh, yes, I think uh, yeah, I think questioning is def definitely a very very important tool that teachers have because uh, through questioning we can create knowledge in the classroom. Let us understand that knowledge is not just in the textbook. We make a mistake thinking that only the textbook has knowledge or the teacher has knowledge because we have learned from textbook. So we carry a lot of knowledge. Remember that through questioning, we can create new knowledge with the help of the learners. This is a very important idea in 21st century. Because in 21st century, like I st started the presentation by saying, that there is a lot of information around. We need to see what we are doing with that information. Therefore, questioning is definitely a very powerful shastra, a very powerful tool that teachers have in their toolkit. And you can actually create magic. You can create new knowledge structures through questioning in your classroom. For example, you can ask students to ask questions to community workers, like they can go back into their locality, neighborhood, and ask more questions. For example, in this COVID-19 times, I asked my students to uh, uh, make uh, telephonic calls and ask their neighbors what kind of problem they're facing. So through questioning, they're finding out the experiences of people in pand this pandemic time. This is a new knowledge, see? Nobody knows who is facing what problem. We can only guess, but we don't know. So. Students should also be encouraged to ask questions. The teacher is asking questions, yes, but students should also en be encouraged. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you very much, ma'am. Sir, please unmute thank yourself. You, thank you very much, ma'am. So, P. Prasadra was asking, can we use past perfect tense in questioning? Can we ask? Can past we use? perfect can we use? Past perfect tense in questioning. Past perfect, past perfect. Yes, definitely. Uh, in question, questions can be asked in all tenses. Okay. So, uh, uh, for example, how long uh, have you been studying English? How long have you been studying? This is uh, uh, continuous, perfect, perfect continuous. Uh, past uh, perfect. Also, you can ask questions. In all the 12 tenses, questions uh, can be asked. If you look at our uh, material pack, uh, we have given you very detailed information about the 12 tenses. 
and how to ask questions in all the 12 tenses. If you watch that YouTube video link, which is included in the materials pack, that also gives you questions in all tenses. We could not discuss all the tenses on the webinar because there is no time to do all tenses. But I think as adults, uh, we can go back and check our understanding if we want. Uh, so yes, of course, you can use different tenses to ask questions in all tenses. In order to uh, improve uh, language or speaking skill, whether uh, yes or no questions or not, otherwise which type of questions should be asked? Okay, uh, for speaking, speaking ask. skills. From Polita, okay. how to speak okay. Okay, thank you for that question. Very good question again. Uh, to develop speaking skills, if you ask yes, no question, then you can see that there is very limited scope for speaking. Because yes, no will not allow your students to speak much. They will only say yes and no. So uh, if you want to develop speaking skills, then you have to ask open-ended question. If you ask open-ended question, then they will speak. If you ask close-ended question, they will not speak. Therefore, I started the uh, webinar by saying that the teacher has the power to decide the participation in the class. So if, if you are facing problem in your class that your learners don't speak, then ask yourself, what questions am I asking? Am I asking yes, no question and expecting my students to speak a lot? They can't speak because your question is not allowing them to explore further. So therefore, the primary responsibility lies with the teacher to ensure that there is enough participation and interaction in the classroom. Thank, Thank you. you very much, ma'am. Thank you so much uh, for today's presentation. So many questions are still pending, but uh, time is also over now. I can so. see the I can see the effect of the webinar. <laughs> the webinar was on questioning skills, so lots of questions today. Yes, yes, I'm yes. very happy to see that. <laughs> so many are still pending. So what you were meant really? So can we have the questions? Yeah. Can we have the questions in the comment section? I can respond and Hema ma'am can also respond later. Yes, yes, you can you can do that, ma'am. So many questions are still there. Okay, so uh, thank you. You can uh, respond over there also. Okay. The uh, viewers, yes, uh, you. if your question has not been asked by me, no. Uh, so please excuse us. Uh, we have limited time, so we can pick some only. So so that uh, excuse for that. So thank you very much, madam, for today's uh, questioning skills uh, uh, topic. Well, uh, I will start questioning <laughs> from now onwards. Uh, thank on behalf you. of uh, all the viewers uh, and the CRP, uh, we can be our sincere thanks to Dr. Munishita H. Pandey Garu, as well as Dr. Hemalata Garu. You have given a nice presentation. Hope uh, teachers of APU make use of this knowledge and they will improve their questioning skills so that uh, our students get benefited. Thank you very much for today. Uh, we'll, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you very much. And signing off with for the, today. With the guidance of, sir, with the guidance of Monshita, yeah. ma'am, I pull it off, sir. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much.